Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Avernum 2. Last episode, we went through the city of Silvar. Now, it's time to explore around the eastern caves a bit, see what we can find. I do remember what's to the east here. Yep, Fort Dovno, 45 miles north, Silvar, 40 miles west. And there, the original portal to Avernum. You returned to Fort Avernum, the point at which everyone banished to Avernum first arrived. The building seemed abandoned and the walls are starting to crumble. Let's investigate. You enter the fort and find that it has been officially closed down. The Empire has stopped sending people to Avernum, so there is no reason to maintain an outpost here. There are, however, plenty of people here. The crumbling fort is currently being used to house refugees from Kotra, a ruined city to the west. You speak with the poor display souls for a time. Your fellow Avernites are tiled, dispirited, and hungry. They are being helped somewhat by a small group of overburdened guards, but it's not enough. You look for a way to help them, but there isn't much to be done. Depressed by the grim situation, you depart. I'm surprised it wasn't taken over by the Empire. You'd think that they'd send their own army through the portal if they could. I guess it just wasn't strong enough for that. A group of merchants has set up camp here by the road. These dispirited fellows look like they've been here for some time. Their lizard mounts look hungry and are in great need of fresh declawing. The bored merchants are eager to talk. It doesn't take long to get their story. They were taking a shipment of metal and weapons from Fort Draco to Kotra, where it would have been shipped to the Great Cave. Then Kotra was destroyed. Now they are waiting for the roads to the south to be clear enough for them to have a safe trip in southern Avernum. They will likely have a long wait. In the meantime, the merchants, in desperate need of hard cash, are very interested in selling you some of their goods. Mm. Nothing we need. Oh, oh, though now that I think about it, we do have things we can sell. Forgot about that. The stuff we got from the bandits. Alright. From Mello, 200 miles north, Fort Avonum, 40 mile, 5 miles south. Alright. Well, let's take a look through Fort Dovno. Yeah, I figured that would lead it to a dead end. Uh, Fort Dovno is pretty well protected from what I can see. And again, the wall isn't as... Th what the hell? A man with the look of a refugee walks up to you and mutely holds out a begging bowl. He bows his head in an almost but not quite humble manner. I'm Dorkin, sirs. How do you wind up down here? Well, I'll tell you. The Empire threw me down here for being poor, no more no less. So I go to Kotra and I work hard. Made a make a business for myself. What sort of business? I was the best cobbler in Kotra, and then the Empire comes down here and they make me poor again. So I'm starting to figure maybe some fellow's just meant to be poor. So could you maybe give me a coin? Sure, here you go. He nods. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. No idea what you're doing way out here, though. Oh well. Ah, he's guard. All right. Onward into the fort. To look around and all that kind of stuff. Alice's restaurant. Damn it, I know there's a song about that. I just can't remember the how it went. You meet a small, gorgeous woman wearing somewhat sparse dancer's clothes. Bereft of an audience, however, she seems somewhat depressed. She fro She floats gracefully over to you. I'm a lady. Hi. Nice clothes. Are you a professional dancer? <sighs> yes, I'm just passing the time till tonight. I'll be dancing. You should come to the show. Perhaps I can make it to the show. She does a twirl on one foot. It's a move both graceful and pulse quickening. Avernites have always needed some cheering, now more than ever. I guess being thrown down here gave me my calling. What did you do on the surface? I was one of the last people thrown into a vernum. They didn't want me to dance up there. Too, uh, stirring, they said. I wouldn't give it up, so they threw me down here where people really need some beauty in their lives. It's not much I know, but it means a lot to me. We don't meet many dancers in Avernum. I am not surprised. When I was thrown into Avernum, my soul was heavy. I could not dance at all. I could not start again until... Until what? Her movements become more clumsy for a moment. She looks upset. I did not come down here alone. We... 
We tried to survive, but I... I'm alone now. I... Uh, I will spend my time dancing, and it's the only t way I can express my... As a tear runs down her face, she struggles to regain the simple grace of movement she had when you began to speak with her. It's a partial success. Poor woman. This bar is tended by a striking woman with short black hair and a pleasant smile. She's quiet for a barkeep. She just raises her eyes up at you as you approach. You ask her name. She simply says, Alice, what do you have for sale this fine day? Room, five coins. Drinks, two coins. Gossip, free. Any gossip you care to share with me? She leans close. Archer in town. Name's Gordon. Asking around about passes or some such. He doesn't want people to know about it, but he was rude to me, so now you know. Oh well. She grins mischievously. Okay. Nothing there. Not likely to be anything in here. I was correct. Back to exploring. That might be the archer. It is. You meet a very heavy-set man with a longbow slung over his shoulder and a full quiver of arrows at his side. He looks you over nervously as you approach. I'm Gordon. How fares ye? You have a job in town? You're just killing time. He looks back down at his drink. He doesn't seem inclined to say anything else. His drink? Okay. I heard you were asking about around about passes. At first he looks upset that you know what he's after. Then he looks you over carefully. Ah, I know you! You're the one who went to the Venati. It's safe to talk to you. He pulls you aside. You see, I've been going f from town to town looking for certain scrolls from the surface. What kind of surface scrolls? He pulls out a vellum scroll edged in red ink. This is a red pass. The troops down here need passes to get into Empire lands. I'm looking for a blue and a gray pass. That's why I'm heading down to Myrtis. My goal, you see, is to look into, into some rumors. Why are you headed to Myrtis? The Grey Pass is the most important one, and I hear that there's a prisoner in Myrtis who knows where one is. If I get one, I can start looking into certain rumors. What rumors? He looks very worried. I hear from prisoners the Empire's building this portal from up there to down here so they can teleport down a whole army. They'd wipe us out if they could do that. I'm going to look into it. Not the best spy, but I know these caves as well as anyone. Alright then, keep that in mind. Let's see. Ooh. I'm guessing a medic. There is a young, dark-skinned man sitting behind the table, chopping healing herbs as fast as he can. He's obviously exhausted. You ask who he is. I, I am Yucha, the healer. Are you well? He looks you over for ailments. Are you the only healer in Fort Dovno? Yes, the only healer for miles. I heal all who come to me. I have some time to help you out if you need it. Though, heaven knows everyone's everything's been mad since the barriers came down. What happened after the barriers came down? We haven't heard anything. We've been so far south. The assault on Kotra was bad enough, but when the Venati barriers dropped, the war really started up again. The Empire was more reinforced, and we were more prepared, and the bodies have come non-stop. I need more supplies, but I do the best I can. What sort of supplies do you need? Herbs, Glen Goss, Greymold South, Comfrey Root. I do what I can, but I'm always running out of something vital. Sadly, I don't think there's very much that we can provide to help. Pick the lock. Oh. The pit in the center of this room contains several dead Avernite soldiers awaiting cremation. They are kept from rotting by blocks of ice laboriously dragged from the colder tunnels. Well. Should have expected to see that. Headquarters. Well, hello. You meet a tall, gaunt soldier. His face is heavily lined and not just with age. His expression seems locked in a permanent scowl, and his eyes are cold. He looks you over and says, I am Captain Johnson. What can I do for you? Are you in charge of this fort? He nods slowly. His eyes never stop meeting your gaze. I rule this fort. Tell me of this fort. Fort Dovno is a knife aimed at the heart of the Empire. We never miss a chance to slay an enemy of Avernum. Or a potential enemy. Sounds like the Empire is in trouble if it comes near here. He smirks. A strong foe, but we can make things feel very ugly for them when we get our hands on them. Very ugly indeed. Uh, you're adventurers, are you not? I often look to hire adventurers to go on missions. I have strong troops, but they have their hands full babysitting refugees. If you're interested, let me know. What mission do you have for us? Yes, I do have something for you. Somewhere to the west, to the north of Kotra, some sliffs, some of the hostile kind, of a hidden lair. Find it and kill their leader, and you'll be rewarded. 
Captain Johnson watches you with a cold, constant gaze. He has the look of one who has killed so many people that he's starting to lose track of who around him is on his side and who isn't. Where could we find this hidden slith lair? I do not know. Nobody in this fort knows. Maybe one of the soldiers in another outpost here knows. All we know is that there is a large warren of them near here, and we think that it is north of Kotra. Fortunately, we know where. Hear any interesting news? Nothing good. Nothing, ma nothing to make me happy. The world has gone mad. In Silvar, they are trying to broker peace with the kiddies. Elsewhere, they are dealing with the Sliths. As if we don't have enough problems. We're trying to deal with those savages, too. Kiddies? You mean the Nephilim? I mean the kiddies. Deadly brutes. Dealing with them is madness. They should know better. What do you have against the Slith Zerakai? Some of them <clears throat> have been allied with us for years. What, you think I'm going to back off on my beliefs because there's a slith here in front of me? Nonsense, they're savages. I've been fighting them for years. If I'm ordered not to kill them, I won't, but I don't like it. Rex, please put the spear down. Much as I sympathize, please put the spear down. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to step outside. I don't want to see him dead when I walk back in. Hello again, Captain Johnson. My, uh, you seem to have a bruise there on your cheek. Are you okay? Okay, then. Moving on. Hmm, storage shed, I imagine. Or the cells. Yes, these are the prisoner cells. As I saw from the rope and the scalpel. Oof, scalpel. Bit brutal here, but uh, Rorix rations and booze. <laughs> of course, booze. You gotta have booze for the <laughs> soldiers. There is a jolly merchant sitting behind the counter. He has the look of one who's done much sampling of his own wares. Welcome, friends. I'm Rorik, brewer and cook of great renown. Tell us about about your wine. He laughs and jiggles. <laughs> <laughs> I was banished into Inferno because my wines were too good. Made them jealous, and I still make them. You can buy the best wines and rations here to take the edge off your journey. You were sent down here for making wine? <sighs> well, actually, it was, it was as revenge for striking up a very close relationship with a magistrate's wife. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and so on for another 40 seconds. We've done a lot of journeying recently. Well, if you're brave or stupid enough to travel in these times, I'll do what I can to help. Alright, we'll keep your place in mind. Oop. Phase Fine Goods. Open soon. Hmm, not open yet. An imposing woman with graying hair and a severe expression is setting up shop. She looks highly displeased at your intrusion. I'm Faye. Now leave. What are you doing in here? I'm setting up my shop and you are trespassing. Sorry to intrude. We'll be leaving now. She looks ready to call the guard at a moment's notice. I'm still recovering from escaping Kotra. I don't need you bothering me. Were you there when the Empire attacked? Yes, I was there, and I've had what I have to say about it ignored enough. Fools, soldiers, you don't know when someone is trying to help. Now, please, now leave me alone. Please help us. What did you see? She snaps at you. I have been ignored long enough. They all say they don't know where the attack came from, but I, I saw lights on the island south of Kotra not long before the troops arrived. And they say I imagine it, that there's nothing there. I know that island is bare, but that's where they came from. She speaks very loud and very clear. You won't deal with me, I won't deal with you. Now, will you please leave? She turns her back on you. Okay. Well, we know about where they came from now, by now, almost certainly. There is a thin old man sitting under the tree fishing. He doesn't notice you. You tap him on the shoulder. Eh? Oh, hello. Call me Scott. As he watches, he reels in a pale, wi wriggling cavefish. Edible, but unappealing. What are you up to? Oh, just an old man whiling away his last year's fishing. How'd you wind up here? Nephilim destroyed my farm years ago. Now I just do odd jobs for my keep and relax fishing, and keeping those darned refugees away. You don't like the refugees? No, that's not it. They just scare the fish. I have nothing against them. I give them the fish I catch. It's nice to see someone being nice to the refugees in that way. 
How can you relax like this with a war on? He looks up at you. Friend, the world is always full of suffering. It gets worse or it gets better, but it never ends. So sometimes, no matter how bad it gets, you just need to f force out a little moment of peace. I'll tell you that for nothing. Alright then. I, I can understand and respect that decision, that opinion. You are in the middle of a makeshift refugee camp filled with l some of the men and women who successfully fled Kotra after it was destroyed. Living conditions are crude at best, but livable. The people are poorly fed and the fires are weak, but they're getting by. As you look around, you are peppered with questions about what's going on in the outside world. Some worried souls also ask you if you've seen a missing loved one. You answer their questions as best you can and leave. Oh, I will speak with them. Each of them. A refugee. Refugee. You never know, one of them might be named. Unlikely, but possible. And it seems the answer is no. Walner the Sage. Sage and Alchemist Extraordinaire. Okay then. You meet a short, stocky man with blonde hair and a broad smile. His mage's robes have tiny holes in them, as, he, as if eaten away by the little specks of acid. He stands and shakes your hand. I'm Walner. Welcome to this place of learning. What sort of learning do you specialize in? He waves at the bookshelves on the north wall. Collecting all the knowledge there is to be had in our subterranean abode, enough to identify your items, for example, or to give instruction in alchemy. What sort of alchemy? He indicates the tiny holes in his robes with embarrassment. I do alchemy often, although my concoctions often spit back at me. Many of my recipes are quite useful. In particular, I know how to make two valuable potions which restore magical energy. If you have the money and inclination, you can buy that knowledge. You have my interest. We'll take it. Oh, we already know that. Okay. Is there anything... While you decide to what else to ask about, Walner continues to work on making some sort of potion. Occasionally, a splatter of harsh, smoky fluid splatters out and burns another hole in his robes. Is there anything you are trying to learn? A few things. I have been trying to learn about cursed items, and I have been trying to learn about dread curses. Dark topics, true, but all the more important because of their seriousness. Why are you interested in cursed items? They are fascinating. Usually, they are the results of magical experimentation gone wrong, but not always. I've heard that there are even items that cause their bearer to become ill constantly. If you ever find an item like that, just throw it away. It'll do nobody any good. What do you want to know about dread curses? A dread curse is a powerful and per pernicious curse, usually laid on a place to magically punish those who intrude. They are very difficult to cure, but I suspect it is not impossible. If someone told me who can cure such a curse, I would reward them. We'll keep that in mind. Hopefully we'll find out before too long. Amalia's Supplies There is a small, nervous woman sitting at the table. She cleans and sorts lockpicking tools and prepares vials of poison with greasy fingers. She smiles unpleasantly. I'm Amalia. Hi. Interesting stuff you're selling here. You can buy tools of thievery here and sell any goods you may have um, acquired in your travels. <laughs> You're lucky you've come to my shop during generous times. How am I in luck? Well, the soldiers were too busy to worry too much about a little petty thievery, and anyway, the stuff I sell is too useful. Useful to who? Certain servants of Avernum are always needing lockpicks and poison for little spying jaunts, recon, wet work. You know how it is. How are you going to infiltrate an empire fort without lockpicks, eh? She grins and starts sharpening a small, wicked-looking dagger. Heard anything about the destruction of Kotra? Plenty. If you find any good loot there, I'll give you a good price for it. You would pay for stolen loot from Kotra? Disgusting. Fine. You don't like me? Buy tools for your adventures somewhere else. We're in the middle of a war here, and I provide useful supplies to our army. If you have a problem with me making money, the door is over there. Alright. How are you on lockpicks? Ah, oh, ye All the magic ones broke. Oh, gray mold! Well, we'll keep you in mind if we need gray mold again. A couple crystals. Nothing we need. J.R. Fletcher Extraordinaire. You meet a small woman with delicate features and long brown hair. She looks up from the large pile of arrows she was busy fletching. 
Welcome to my shop, adventurers. You can call me JR. Nice arrows. Thanks. I'm making these arrows for the troops. You can purchase them yourself if you like. Looks like the troops need a lot of arrows. They do. Every weapon maker around here is busy. We're preparing for the worst after what happened in Kotra. What do you expect will happen now? I think that is clear. The Empire is going to kill every Avonite they can get their hands on. If we don't get strong enough, we'll all be dead. And various arrows and the like. Okay, then. And that's everything in the fort here. Let's take a look around here a bit. See what's out here and all. This jagged area has been used as a garbage dump for some time. The filth has attracted a number of unpleasant creatures. They regard your arrival as a chance to dine on some fresh meat. Seven poison funguses and a shambler. Eh, it can't be good. Not at all. Okay, then. Fire blast. That helps a lot. Ow. That helps. Alright, heal Gary, please. And you. Fire blast again. Yeah, that killed most of them. Aw, oh, didn't quite die. Fine. Finish it off! There you go. Excellent. That was good. Alright, further looking around. Okay. I think there's something in the middle here. You you start to enter this dark, heavily overgrown glade when you find that the path is mocked by a huge crowd of gremlins. You immediately notice two things. First, the gremlins are extremely glum, and second, they are all male. Very odd. They seem sedate and harmless, but gremlins are very volatile and potentially dangerous creatures. Approach and talk to them. The gremlins seem too depressed to react as you approach, although they still block your way into the glade. One of the more elderly of the purple creatures approaches to talk to you. You ask what's wrong. He says, It's so awful! You see, recently all of our all our women decided to go out for a walk. Or wine run, we aren't sure. Anyway, they never came back. That's scandalous! I mean, it's usually trees that act like that. Wait, what? Oh, if only someone could tell us where they went. Their absence is causing us great, uh, discomfort. And we would greatly reward anyone who could tell us where they were. He turns to leave, then remembers something. By the way, they were all wearing pink ribbons when they left. This may help. He then turns to go back to moping. Discomfort. Sure. Okay. Oh! That's probably it. The, uh, the Nefarum cave that we're supposed to help with. Unless it's somewhere in here. Could be somewhere in here. I don't know. Or it's over in here. To the north, you can see that a band of Nephilim or Nefarum, or both, have burrowed out of, fort of the, out of the living rock in the cave wall. A large band of guards keeps careful watch in front. Well, that's where they are. And that heads further north into, well, the areas we've already explored. I'll take a look around here. When you get close to this crumbled hub, you hear combat. Approaching stealthily, you'll come across an Avernum patrol being attacked by a band of Empire soldiers. They won't last long unless you help them. We'll help! Even if there is a mage. I can reach that mage, though. No, not him. That mage must die! Alright. Haste, Rex. Kill the mage. You? Eh, lightning spray, sure. There you go. Oh boy, soldiers are taking damage. Oh boy. Do what you can to help. Hmm. You know what? Smite might be able to do something. It's not very powerful. Actually, take that back. Divine Fire. There you go. Now we can finish these guys off. 
even if we did lose a lot of lives. Alright, let's take what loot we can. Iron chain mail, studded armor, studded armor, chain mail, chain mail, chain mail, ah, uh, carrying too much. Chain mail, iron studded, anything, ah, iron large shield, large shields. And it's mostly iron long swords now. Grab them. Take all you can. We'll take all the loot we can. And there. The soldiers are profoundly grateful for your assistance. You help them bandage and revive their wounded as best you can, and they head off at top speed for Fort Dubno. Once there were several farms here. They've been abandoned and left to be overgrown with lichen for years. You don't even bother to search the ruins. Looters have probably been through here dozens of times. There's a couple places here to look at. This area was home to a large farming settlement of Avernites and was so until recently. Scorch marks running along the shattered walls give quiet but clear testimony to what happened. There's nothing here now but rubble and graves. You turn away, shuddering anew at what the Empire is doing to your homeland, city by city and hut by hut. You are at the base of a high mound of rock overlooking this huge cavern. From the top you would have a panoramic view of the whole area. There are the ruins of a fort at the top of the hill. You inspect the ruins. Most of the walls and buildings have crumbled. There is a small intact hut in the middle of the ruin. There is a sign on the door. All Avernites welcome. It is surprising that anyone, Avernite or Empire, would choose to live out here so brazenly. This is a dangerous area. I'm going to save first. Because it sounds like a trap. Alright, let's try this. Knock on the door. When you knock, a small elderly mage in a, with a sparse snowy white beard opens the door and welcomes you in. Greetings, fellow Avenites. I am Kostad. You're understandably suspicious and he notices. Oh, don't worry. Empire soldiers can't see my hut unless I let them. I'm a spy, you see. <laughs> I look out to the west for attackers. You enter the hut, still on your guard, and talk to Kostad for a bit. He says, it's a risky job and it's much more helpful than teaching at the mage tower. And more exciting, too. Though I do know a few spells I could teach you, if you're interested. Make the monotony of spying, yes? Sure. And we already know all of them. Well, most of them. Uh, you know what, call Beast, what the hell. I've used it on rare occasions, so thanks. And we got stuff to sell, and that'll probably be the end of the episode. Then we'll look in the caves to the north of the to see. Get over there. Okay, we got stuff to sell you. Even if you are something of a war profiteer of sorts. Wait a second. Oh, we have five mushrooms. We are... We don't have as much food as I thought. We'll have to pick some up. Okay, so next episode, we'll take a look in these caves up here. Starting with this one over here. I'm curious what it is. Hidden cave. Hmm. Well, that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I'm Trust for 44 that is Rex, Gary, Tolly, and Leah. This has been an Avernum 2 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.